And Tuck has made a return. It's a return of the Antec to the DIY PC world. Everyone's like, Antec's dead. And they're like, no, we're back. Uh, they released their CA case earlier this year. People were like, that's a good case. They're actually pretty good. Uh, and today they're unveiling another standout, the Flux Pro. This full tower chassis prioritizes GPU cooling with its innovative, well, I don't know if it's innovative, it's pretty cool. It's a PSU shroud cooling system. We're gonna take a closer look at it. Priced at 180 USD for the black model and 185 for the white version. The Flux Pro is a premium case packed with features designed to enhance GPU. I already said that. Uh, stick around for the testing segment later in this video. We're actually gonna see it in action. It does cut down the, the GPU temps quite a bit, so uh, stick around for that. For now though, let's take a look at the case itself. Close up look at all the features and the layout and the, the exterior. Look at, the, look, look at this exterior. A sleek, fine mesh front panel, so sexy. Framed by real wood accents, even sexier. It has that touch of sophistication that seamlessly integrates into any home environment. Unless you live in a cave, then it probably won't match well with that. Uh, the black model boasts walnut accents, and the white version showcases ash. Ash Ketchum. Uh, at the bottom, a removable, uh, removable dust filter spans the entire length of the case, and the front panel can be removed toollessly. And in fact, all the panels on this chassis are designed for tool-free removal, removal, removal uh, allowing for quick and easy access. Um, at the front, you'll find three of Antec's Tranquil 140 fans, which are the first of six pre-installed spinners. The fan bracket is fully removable and supports up to three 120 or 140 millimeter fans and up to a 420 mil radiator, big boy. Additionally, the bracket is vertically adjustable with five different positions, providing ample clearance for top-mounted cooling solutions, including radiator and fan assemblies up to 75 millimeters thick. The top-facing I.O. panel features a power and reset button, combo audio jack, two USB 3.0 Type-A ports, a USB-C 10 gigabits per second port, and a button for controlling the case's built-in temp display, which we'll explore later. Removing the top panel uncovers an additional removable bracket. There's a lot of removable mounting brackets on this case. Uh, this one features the exact same cooling support as the front one. So up to a 420 mil radiator, so thick! The bracket's removal also leaves the top edge of the chassis completely open for unfettered access to the interior. Get your hands dirty. Get them in there. On the left uh, is a what, tempered glass side panel, and beneath it is a smaller ventilated plate that lines the PSU shroud. Here's where we find that dual temp display that monitors CPU and GPU temps in real time via Antec's iUnity software that we'll need to install later. The right side of the case is covered by a single metal panel that's ventilated at the bottom, just like the side opposite of it. Uh, uh, removing all the panels. If you remove the panels, you get a first glimpse of the case's innovative GPU cooling solution. I'm gonna stop saying innovative. GPU cooling solutions right here. It's pretty cool. Uh, on the PSU shroud, you'll find two of Antec's PL120 fans with reverse blades, so they don't look stupid. There's space to add a third 120 mil fan by removing a small mesh plate, though this isn't gonna be as effective as the other two fans because it's, it's gonna be partially obstructed by the, the power supply beneath it. Um, these fans are positioned directly below the graphics card, and then it draws air. They draw air from the lower chamber through the extensive side and bottom ventilation. And there is a lot of ventilation, both sides, the bottom, the bottom fan at the front of the case enhances airflow too, especially when the cooling bracket is set to that lowest position. Pretty sweet. Beautiful. The PSU shroud fan mount, the PSU shroud fans are mounted on a fully removable bracket, another removable bracket that supports up to a 360 millimeter radiator. What? Offering more cooling potential and uh, actually there's a nice space there for, uh, for graphics cards with built-in AIO coolers. Usually you're like, where the, where the hell do I put this thing? You can slap the radiator right there on the PSU shroud, man. Oh yeah, the bracket's uh, design is fully open, so that's, like, there's no mesh between the fans and, and the bracket, so that's better for airflow. Uh, avoids the restrictions commonly found in many cases with poorly ventilated PSU shrouds. But amen, amen, brother. Uh, GPU cooling is further enhanced by allowing up to two 120 mil or 140 mil fans on the case floor. To install a single 120 or 120 mil fan, you can simply slide the adjustable drive cage to one side, baby. Slide it to, slide, part it to the side, baby. For two fans, however, you are gonna need to remove the cage entirely. The cage includes a, a combo tray for one three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive and support for an additional drive of either size on top. A unique feature, this is actually kind of weird, is the ability to, you can mount the drive cage to any, anywhere in the case where you can mount a 120 fan. Boys look kind of funny depending on where you put it. 
Overall though, the case's GPU cooling design is, is very thoughtfully engineered, surprisingly, and, and goes far beyond slapping a couple fans onto the PSU shroud and calling it a day, but we are gonna see just how effective it is once we get the system up and running. The rest of the interior feels more familiar. Large cutouts and cable grommets in all the right places, another tranquil 140 fan at the rear, and eight expansion slots with an open design for those installing their own vertical GPU bracket. It's a fancy way of saying vertical GPU bracket not included. Behind the motherboard, I was surprised to see a healthy amount of storage compatibility. There's two removable cages that each support one three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive, and two additional two and a half inch drives can be installed on the pair of removable plates located beneath the CPU cooler cutout. With the bottom drive cage, this brings the case's total storage support to six drives, four of which can either be three and a half inch or two and a half inches. Down the middle of the motherboard tray are two wide channels for run and cables. This and the CPU cable area are both lined with sturdy Velcro straps for a flush side panel fit. For added convenience and tidiness, there's also a five channel ARGB PWM fan hub that can sync with your MOBO. I like this feature. Uh, I, it would have been nice to have a few more channels here given the high number of fans that are supported in the chassis, just saying. Uh, the case also boasts, boasts, so it's so boasty, an iShift PSU mounting system, which includes an extension cable that uh, you can rotate the PSU basically 90 degrees so that it faces the, the, the ports face outward. This orientation just makes the visibility and accessibility a bit nicer. Cable routing is much easier and it frees, it actually does free up more space in the lower chamber too for uh, improved air intake, so that's nice. With its spacious interior and a bajillion removable brackets, this case is extremely easy to build in. It is actually very easy to build in. Uh, the ample space for cable routing also keeps the lower chamber clear, ensuring optimal airflow throughout the system, yay. After downloading Antec's iUnity software, the temp display turned on automatically. The control button on top of the case cycles between showing the CPU and GPU temp simultaneously. You could do one or the other, or you could just turn the display off. One minor critique is that the uh, the CPU, where it says CPU and GPU, that, that, that text isn't fully visible if you're viewing from a high angle. So uh, they should have put the text at the bottom, like below, below the, the temp numbers. That would have been a wiser choice. That said, the iUnity app does offer accurate temperature data that, that matches very closely with hardware info. Um, even if the GPU temp is only displayed in whole numbers for some weird reason. Before we go over benchmarks, here's a look at our test setup. For all CPU and GPU thermal testing, I used an AMD Ryzen 9 9900X being cooled by an ASUS ROG Strix LC2 360mm AIO with 32 gigs of Team Group DDR5 6200. The bottom drive cage was uninstalled and all the case fans were run at 100% RPM for consistency. GPU thermals were monitored in various configurations that we'll discuss in a moment. But for CPU temps, uh, we tested with the Flux Pro's stock fan configuration and an RTX 3090 Supreme X from MSI. In the Cinebench R23 multi-thread stress test, the 9900X hit a max temp of 73C with an average temp of 70C. For a more realistic scenario that doesn't sound like a plane taking off, I put the case fans, I brought them back to stock PWM profiles and I was surprised that the peak temp only increased by one degree at 74C, while average temps were just two degrees higher at 72C. So, you know, just because the case is focused on GPU cooling, that shouldn't overshadow its ability to tame the temps of high-end CPUs as well. GPU thermal testing was done with two separate graphics cards to gauge the case's cooling performance for different types of GPU shrouds. The MSI RTX 3090 Supreme X, with its uh, triple fan cooler, it's a bit more standard for, for most users, and then the RTX 4090 Founders Edition with its pass-through design. I also ran three different cooling configurations, including the case's stock setup, uh, another where I removed the PSU shroud fans to simulate a more standard chassis, and then one configuration that adds to that stock setup with uh, two 140 millimeter fans on the case floor. In a 15 minute run of MSI Combust the Nut, the RTX 4090 hovered around 66C with the absence of any shroud or floor fans. There's no basement fans. We'll call them those four fans. We'll call them basement fans. Uh, returning the case to its out of the box config by adding the two shroud fans uh, lowered the GPU temps by five degrees, hmm. bringing it down to 61C on average. Adding a pair of 140 millimeter fans to the floor of the chassis reduced temperatures slightly by about one degree. For the RTX 3090 Supreme X, removing all four basement fans returned a temp of 77C on average, 
Adding the two shroud fans dropped temps by seven degrees, not too shabby, allowing the GPU to run at 70C. It's actually pretty, this is the coolest I've ever seen this card run. It, it you know, it, my personal card. I've stuck it in a lot of different builds. I've never seen it run at 70C. So that's actually really good. Uh, introducing the floor fans didn't have a measurable effect in either direction. Meh. So clearly given the results, adding the floor fans doesn't really, doesn't hurt the GPU temps, but it doesn't really help them either. I think that's just because there's, there's, they're just disrupting the circulation in the lower chamber instead of aiding it. This makes the floor of the case better utilized for storage. Just put that drive cage back in there. Uh, extra room for cables and hubs uh, or a radiator if you're doing a custom loop. On the flip side, the two PSU shroud fans do offer a significant thermal improvement for graphics cards and seem to favor standard cooling shrouds like the one on the MSI card, though our Founders Edition card did see a decent drop in temperatures as well. It is, uh, it is kind of a bummer that this, you know, that Antic's sponsoring this video because any kind of good things I say about this product, this case, uh, has to be taken with a grain of salt, as well it should be. But for what it's worth, I do, the data doesn't lie, that's obviously facts. And uh, I do think that once other reviewers get this case on their hands, I think they're gonna like it. I think it's gonna get good reviews. So uh, that's uh, also now that I've taken it for a spin, I might be slightly interested in doing a custom loop with it. So if, uh, if that's something you'd like to see me do in the near future, let me know and share any ideas you have for such a build. There's a lot of possibilities here. A lot of possibilities, baby. That's all for this one though, guys. Thank you all. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good one and I'll see y'all in the next video.